Welcome prodigious, prodigious, that's easy for me to say, prodigious agents and investors from across the country. Today is Thursday, August 19th, 2021, and this is mastermind call number 341. I heard a rumor that we have someone named Valerie who's going to be calling in that had an amazing win. Uh, we love your wins, guys. If you have one, please show up and share, and good good chance you'll end up getting some free leads, some free historical, or a discount on your next delivery just for sharing and inspiring the group. Um, Bruce, I know Tim has something he wants to go over this week. Is um, Anything you want to go over first? Uh, no, no, we can kick it to Tim. I'm good. All right. Is Chuck here? Chuck, you here? Apparently Chuck is not here yet, our new coach, but I assume he's coming. And let me just look here, see if I – okay. Anyway, I'm going to turn it over to our my illustrious partner and our CEO, Tim. Um, he has an announcement or two to make. Timothy? James, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, first of all, thank you all for being here. And uh, you may have noticed a strange email in your uh, inbox earlier uh, announcing the call, referencing something called National Potato Day. Um, we also just sent you out a much longer and more detailed email uh, that Zeke is pushing out as we speak, and uh, that is going out now to explain this in a bit more detail, but we have a special promotion that we're doing. We, for those of you who may remember back in November of last year, we did sort of a counter holiday to Black Friday, and we made something called Green Friday. And it was quite successful, and everybody took advantage of it, and we added a lot of new customers, and a lot of you who are on this call uh, are, are folks that took advantage of it and grew your business at that point. So we sort of kind of repeated that, but we were wrapping around the fact that uh, today is National Potato Day, and it really is. And, you know, it's a, a much neglected holiday, and most of us love to eat potatoes. So we like to have fun occasionally, and that's kind of what's there. But basically, we're making you three – unique and specific offers to grow your business. I'm not going to sit here and read it to you. We have people on this call that we definitely want you to get in. And as Jim said, hit star six and one to be recognized. And we'll talk about it. If you have any questions about this program uh, and you'd like to talk with us during the call, uh, you know, do that. But focus your time on listening to what goes on on the call until it's over. And then you'll see the instructions for following through with this program. But we're happy to make you some unique offers, and we usually only do this about twice a year to try to help you grow your business, and of course, it does help us grow ours, but right now with inventories at, at a, an incredible low period and time on market being what it is, we know that the opportunity to grow is sometimes needs to be coupled with an opportun opportunity to do that as economically as possible, which is why we create these programs. Uh, this is not something we do all the time in <clears throat> Those of you who have been with us a while know we don't usually do much promotion. We usually don't have to do that. We grow our business organically and, and earn it because we do really well to support you. So, like I said, I'm not going to read all of it, but I will tell you this. It is, a, it is a contest as well as a bunch of offers. Even if you don't want to buy anything, we do want to give you the opportunity to win something. So, uh, the last part of the email that you're receiving will tell you that if you'll just call us, and uh, leave a message that says you want a sweet potato pie and leave your contact information. Or if you do take advantage of any of the offers, uh, you're automatically in the, con the uh, contest. And you can also email your sales rep with the same info that says you want to be in the contest. I want some sweet potato pie. And uh, we'll make sure that you're entered. And the, all the entries we receive, we're going to draw one of them and we'll announce it next Tuesday. And the grand prize is if you win, You'll have your choice of any one of the three offers that we're making in this one-time special uh, for free. So that could literally net you thousands of dollars in commissions or sales profits, and we'll be delighted to do it. And we bet you won't ever forget National Potato Day again. So that's the scoop. Read your email and uh, take a look at it. And uh, if you have any questions, certainly call us. That's the whole idea here. We're trying to get in touch with you. We want to talk with you and want to help you grow your business. So that's the scoop on the program, and as Jim said, it's star six and one, and uh, you'll be next in the queue. 
Perfect. And Tim, you must love potatoes. When I read the three of them, that last offer be- before the uh, sweet potato pie was the most generous that we've ever given, which is, is a pretty extraordinary discount for for up to three months. So, it, you know, if you want to add a – yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. And, you know, I, I meant what I said. We, you know, I, I kind of look at this as a holistic business, and we, we don't get the opportunity as much as we should to realize that there are people out there who are struggling and – Finding a good economic way to potentially grow your business quickly, we know that our system works. We know it's successful, and I want to try to make it available to as many people as we can, and certainly we try to operate our business at a profit. But I think, again, those who know us know that we've been doing this since 2013, and uh, we we wouldn't have been able to continue to do it if we didn't do it well and if we didn't treat people fairly. So please take advantage of this and take advantage of our generosity to help you grow your business. You'll be thankful and we'll be thankful. Awesome. And as you mentioned, we do have two people in the queue, guys. We have, without fail, we start off with one or two and then about five minutes of like six of you will jump in there. So please don't do that. Jump in early. Um, We do have two. In addition to the drawing that we're having, we have two prizes every week for the uh, win of the week. And it, it does have to be a probate specific win. It has to either be a a contract signed or a listing taken. Uh, And then we have our idea of the week. And we're particularly looking for what you guys are doing other than than working the probate leads. But what are you doing outside the box to generate listings in this uh, ridiculously strong seller's market? So we're looking for the idea of the week and the win of the week. And again, hit star six and hit one. And let's go to our first caller this week is our friend, Eddie, 5464. You're up first, Eddie. How's it going? Doing great, bud. Good to hear from, good to hear from you, man. What's up? Uh, well, I've got the problem, but I need advice on how I should have handled it, uh, an appointment yesterday. And then I, I don't know if this is an idea of the week or not, but uh, it's something I'm working on right now, and I'd be happy to share it with other people to see how, Great. you know, if they're making the same mistake that I am. So uh, first off, it, yesterday I went to an appointment uh, with a guy, and I this is even before I was an all the lead subscriber. I used to pull all of my data, like at my, you know, in the morning, and then send them out, uh, like send out all the. I'd spend a lot of time pulling my data and then send out letters. And this guy called me. I'd say I met him in 2017. I don't, I don't, but I've kept in touch with him. He's in my phone as the original hustler. If that says anything about the guy, he has a whole bunch of different jobs and entrepreneurial and everything. And he inherited his dad's two houses right next to each other. Um, and I just follow up with him like kind of yearly. And it sounded like he was, 2020 wasn't a great year for him because he does like a hot dog cart and he does clothing sales and different stuff, stuff like that. And so he was like, yeah, I really need to get this house sold. So then I go to him yesterday and I look at the house again. He tells me that he sold the one next door for 17,000. And I was like, Oh man, I missed an opportunity there. And then, um, then he's like, we're talking about it. And I'm like, here are your options. I'm trying to give him options on what to do. And he's like, just give me $30,000 and I'll walk away. And I was like, I I was trying to present him options, but he didn't want options. Apparently he wanted just, and 30,000 is actually what I went into. Like when I went into the appointment, I was like, if I could get it for 30,000, it'd be a good deal. Um, and he was just like, I was kind of taken off, taken back by him just telling me, like straight up, I don't want options. I don't want anything. I just, I don't want to know if I could get sixty thousand or fifty thousand. He just wanted some cash, and I was like, well, I don't just give, you know, I don't just do quit claim deeds and give people money, but we can uh, do a title search, make sure it's clear, and then uh, close to a title company. And I think that's what we're gonna gonna do. But how should I have? <laughs> Should I have gone into that being like, ask him what he wants first? And I, 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 I'm just kind of been scratching my head because I was kind of taken back by his lack of wanting options. Mhm. Everybody has different motivation, and uh, the okay. answer is yes. When you, when you're, 
having your initial conversation with someone, there should always be a part of it leading up to the appointment where you say, hey, tell, tell me a little bit about what you're looking for. Um, what, I mean, what do, you, uh, what do you want out of the property? What do you want to get rid of and just have me do? And what do you want to keep for yourself? And that should probably reveal some motivation. We're not there to correct or kind of offer them um, any, we're not really there to um, correct them or adjust their, their desires at that point. Um, we're there to gather information so that when we go into the appointment, we know how to present. We know we can kind of formulate what sort of adjustments to their uh, desires that we need to strategize for, different things like that. So I would say that this was um, just simply that you were taken caught off guard because you didn't get that information in the beginning. Um, yeah. I've had conversations like that with people before at the house where we got in arguments over me wanting to get them more money than they wanted for the property. Ultimately, they won because <laughs> um, some people just don't have the same motivations of others. They're just done with it. Uh, maybe they know about some um, issues that you don't know about, or maybe they uh, maybe they perceive issues. I've had people say, my house is in terrible shape. And I get there, it's in great shape. And they point at little settlement cracks and say, look at this. I, this house is falling apart. I know that it's not. And then I've had other people that you go in and there's a two-inch wide gap in the foundation that's clearly falling apart. And they go, oh, yeah, that's nothing. Um, so just identifying what someone's thoughts about are about the house and what their desires are before you go presenting anything is going to be a major kind of step to incorporate in your business. Okay. I, I think part of the reason I didn't get that is just because I've been communicating with him for so long that I almost treat it as like, you know, somebody that I hadn't seen in a long time. Like if you see a friend that you haven't seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I just need to, even if it's that old of a lead, need to follow, find out, you know, just the more of the details and what's motivating them now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Okay. I, I I have another question as well before I tell um, tell my um, strategy. But the so I have watched David Pinnell's interview with Chad from last year like two or three times and just try to figure out you know what he's doing and and he has he has said that he had hired a bunch of uh, salespeople to call for him and he'd found that he was still producing the majority of the business that he is. When, when people are hiring an ISA to work for them, is, is it to more just be like the appointment setter for, for me or for, for the um, probate expert to, to, to go close it? Um, I, I'm trying to automate things more and get get it so I'm not doing as much uh, of the initial first round phone calls. And but it's in the back of my mind, well, my wife actually who listened to the, she was like, didn't David tell you not to do that, or didn't he say that not 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 to do it, but that he didn't find it very successful. So I'm curious how people who are using inside salespeople are finding. Uh, it to be the most valuable, and and so then I can try and replicate that and do it in my business, and not try to get it to where they're closing the deals, but just um, taking some things off my plate where I can mm -hmm. focus on the hotter lead. Well, um, so coming from someone who um, has a, a VA agency and has had VAs calling for me for a long time. And if you're an agent on here, we're talking ISAs. Um, there, there are some things that, uh, that don't work when you hire an ISA and some things that you do work. And a lot of it has to do with the amount of training time and uh, ability that you have. So 10 years ago, approximately, maybe even longer ago than that, I hired my first ISA. And at the time, I was in 100 listing appointments a year, and I didn't really have time 
to spend training them. I was really good on the phone and I was really good at closing listing appointments, but I was running like crazy. So I would go on listing appointments that they would set for me and the people wouldn't show up or they'd say, I don't even know what we're doing here. I just agreed to this to get the guy to shut up, that kind of thing. And I'd go back and I'd listen to the call and what would, would have been said was, uh, no, we don't, we don't want to sell the house. And then the, the VA would say, well, I think that that's the perfect reason to meet with Bruce Hill. And then they'd say, you should meet with me, and I'm going to send Bruce Hill himself out to the house. And I'd be like, who, who am I? I'm not president or anything like that. But so I'd listen to these calls after the fact, and I'd realize that they just didn't have the um, hand-holding that they needed to and the additional training that they needed. Um, and that's the way that most producers are. So most people that have ISAs that they don't get results, it's, it's mainly because they're bu busy producing and not busy training. So it's one of the things that we do is make sure that ISAs are trained. The other thing with ISAs is your expectations from an ISA, whether they're from the states or whether they're overseas, your expectations are really important. Um, I believe that your expectations need to of that ISA need to be that they are a bird dog for you. You're the closer. You're the closer. So I currently have three or four ISAs calling in my business. And my rule for them is that they are going after the objection. So they're laying out a strategy where they're saying to the, the lead, um, hey, we have a concierge uh, service for people going through probate. Uh, do you have everything handled so far, or do you need a little bit of help? And then someone says, we have it handled. And they go, okay, you know, if that changes in the future, let us give you our name and number. You can call us back. And, and the person, obviously, they're going to say yes because they think that they're getting off the phone. And then the ISA gives the, uh, the their number, and then they say, and before I let you go, uh, is your family thinking about keeping the real estate or selling the real estate? And if the answer to that question is we're probably going to sell or uh, we're not 100% sure yet, either one of those answers, the lead comes to me. I just need that lead to be bird dug. So I don't have to call and, and leave the voice messages for 90% of my list. My ISA does that. I don't need to call and talk to 5% of my list that says, no, we're not going to sell, never. I don't need to talk to 4% of the list that says we don't even have real estate. I don't need to talk to the 1% of the list that says, hey, go go play in traffic. I don't need to talk to them. My ISA can talk to them. And then their job is just to identify that four or five, sometimes as high as 10% of people that say probably going to sell, even if they say we're not ready yet. And then I can focus on my 10% of the list. And the ISAs can carry 90% of the work. So appointment okay. setting with an ISA is not necessarily their highest and best use. Their highest and best use is bird dogging your better leads. Okay. No, that, that, that makes sense. Um, and I assume that also helps you cut down the, the number of mailings you have to do. So you can uh, yeah. find I mean, out who doesn't have properties and who, nope, they're not going to sell yeah. or what, whatever. You, you can cut them all out, and then that saves you money in that arena yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. If somebody says, okay. go play in traffic or jump off of a bridge, or they say, hey, never going to sell or don't know what you're talking about, don't have property, then clearly you're going to save some money on direct mail. So it's a great way. You could leverage Probate Plus. You could leverage ISAs to help save save money because that's the biggest waste. Um, that's the biggest waste is mailing some continuing to mail, not continuing to mail someone that uh, doesn't even have a house or will never sell. So if you could kind of pair these uh, these services together, um, it, it should be a significant money savings over time. On top of a higher percentage of conversion that you're going to get. Okay. I like that. Um, okay. 
Well, I appreciate that. Um, what I'm working on right now is I, I met with a, a marketing company to help me do my marketing for my my business. And so one of the things she started doing is she was like, all right, well, what are you doing currently? And I was like, well, I'm doing mailing phone calls. So she asked for my, my mailing. So I gave her one of them and she was like, okay, now I'm going to put it in Google. So she types in my name in Google. And then like my, my website comes up as one, but like the Google company that comes up is another company called Legacy Properties. And my business is Kansas City Legacy Properties. So she was like, you are probably sending business to this person, which they're a property management company, but they probably would buy property if somebody called them. And so she was like, we need to have your Google business set up. So she's, they're put, making my Google business uh, and my online presence align with what my mailing's doing so that if they're like, all right, let me check this Eddie guy out, they either type in my name or they type in my company name and they see a whole bunch of things about me, my Google reviews, um, my Facebook, my what, whatever uh, is, is all out there. And then they can know that you know, hey, you know, this guy has Google reviews and he's a trusted guy. Uh, or these people all had a good experience with it. And um, so really working, like, for lack of a better word, like making it, the branding across the board be good so that if people are searching for you to find out more about you, it, um, it all aligns. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I had no idea. I was probably shooting myself in the foot or giving somebody else business because they didn't call off of my, my mailer. They called off of Google and the call off Google was going to these other people. So, um, that's what we're, that's something I'm working on to really, um, I don't, I don't know if anybody else, if this resonates with them or says, Oh shoot, when somebody gets my mailer, but I figured I'd, let other people know so they could at least yeah. point people to the right place. You need to have a solid and cohesive digital footprint for those people that are going to check you out. Everything from a um, probate website to blogs, to videos, to reviews, to a Google My Business um, or a business account on Google. Um, a lot of these things can be picked up for uh, cheap or free. When I moved to North Carolina, I ran radio ads um, for eight months. And I'd run radio ads before in my business in Virginia um, successfully. And for about eight months, I ran them here. And the first four months, they were falling flat. And I knew that radio worked for the type of business that I was running to get listings. I knew it. But it just wasn't working. I didn't get a single call until one day I finally get a call and I answer and it's this lady uh, named Donna. I'll never forget this call because she started off with, um, I can't believe I got you. Um, as a matter of fact, I just mainly want to tell you that I'm probably not going to use you. And that's a great way to start a call. <laughs> and so I asked her why. And she said, because I've been calling you for uh, weeks now, and you won't return my call. And I said, I, I, I haven't received anything at all from you. What what number are you calling? And she gave me the number, and I punched it in Google, and I found a, a profile for Bruce Hill. Um, as a matter of fact, my middle my middle name is Barrett, um, so I found a profile for Bruce B. Hill um, with a picture that wasn't mine. And I looked the guy up, and I realized that there was another Bruce B. Hill with the same um, same, same age, same look. I mean, everything about me and this guy were identical, selling real estate in my town. And he'd been getting phone calls off of all my radio advertisements for four months, probably. And, and that was the reason that I wasn't getting anything because I just had radio ads out that gave a phone number. But if somebody didn't write it down while they were in the car and they just Googled me, they found him. So a lot of us need to uh, need to think about our business in the same way. Yeah, you're, you're doing a good job making your phone calls. You're doing a good job sending your letters out. Now what happens if somebody wants to go check you out? 
is your mugshot from your DUI six years ago up on, on the first page of Google? Uh, does it talk about your old job, your current job? Um, is there a bad review? I mean, what, what's, what's online if somebody goes and checks you out? Um, I'd almost rather see some negative press online than nothing at all. So, um, Eddie, you're taking a great step to kind of solidify your brand for those people that check you out. And I think everybody else needs to think about this as well. Perfect. Um, Eddie, just um, um, I wanted to back up to your first question. It, it sounds to me like you're doing something that a lot of people do. You're, you're going in with the assumption that the people want their, their highest priority is to get the most amount of money. And that's not uh, it, surprisingly for the 20 percent that all they care about is a quick sale. That's the last thing they care about. They want the money right now. So just don't try to go in with more of an open mind. It sounds like the reason you were surprised that you didn't want to hear the options is you just couldn't believe anybody would not want to get the most amount of money because that would be your position. <laughs> but just try, I would say, go in a little bit more open-minded. When you hear that, it won't surprise you as much. You know, kind of expect it that a percentage of people are going to react that way. Yeah. And Tim, did you have, Tim, do you have something you wanted to add also or no? Yeah. I was just, yeah. I was just going to point out that one of the things that makes it very, very easy for you to differentiate yourself from anybody else in your market is our credit, our credibility websites are designed specifically to do that so that when you're sending traffic off of your letters, you go directly to a website that's focused specifically on probate and all of the things that they may be having trouble with right now are highlighted on that website and it's designed to do a great job for you to precondition them that when you talk to them, they already know what you're doing. They know who you are. They know the things that you're doing and they know that you really do understand probate that you're not just, you know, Billy Bob or Sally who's calling to uh, try and steal their property or talk them into listings or whatever, that you legitimately have a business that's focused on this. And you might want to consider getting one of our websites to do that. Um, I, I, I hear what you're saying. So he, here's one of the hesitancy I have, not, not with getting a website, it's, Somebody called me the other day off of a letter that I sent, and they were like, your letter says pro certified probate expert on it. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, well, we're not in probate. And mm -hmm. so she was like, I don't need your services. And so one of the things that I, I don't know if it pigeonholes myself, but I, I, I've been trying to stay along the lines of inherited property because whether you're in probate or not, the having an inherited property can be a stressful situation. And so, correct me if I'm wrong, or tell me, you know, I, I'm open, I'm all ears. Um, to well, if you're using, if you're, I, I hear you, bud. And if you're using, if you're, if you're using our leads, and as you are, the personal representative is, in fact, if that's who your letters are going to, that personal representative is aware that that property is in probate. The chances of you finding somebody that's not in probate, in fact, are, are, are pretty minimal. Now, whether they have property or not is not the case, but your focus here in these specific leads is to try and find properties that are in probate. And if they happen to you know, call you and say, I don't have anything in probate, say, well, that's fine. Glad to hear that. You can also reference both websites. If you have a regular website and a probate website, you can reference them both in the letter that you send out. That way you're covering all your bases, and it even shows more focus that you very specifically want to support that business, but that you're also a very active active realtor in general. Yeah. Actually, Tim, I, I need to maybe schedule time to talk with you about, um, about that, because Chad was encouraging me to make a probate FAQ page where I record videos that answer questions and – have that as part of my letter as well. So maybe I can See, people, chat with you. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people are visual learners, and a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people like to read. A lot of people will watch videos. You want to cover as many bases as you can. Well, call your sales rep, make a time, and you know, we'd be happy to call you back and talk with you. We can probably help you get something going with that on a on a probate site that will let you do some of that. Okay. Good job, Eddie, and thanks thanks for the idea. We do we do have a full queue. Does that does that help? Yep. 
Yep, yep. I, I don't mean to take up all the all the time. So. I oh no! Know. Thank you for good and a good idea. So far, you're in first place for the idea of the week. Make sure, make sure <laughs> the leads are going to you, and make sure all of your marketing is consistent. You know, and, and has the has the same theme. I think that was the idea, correct? Correct. Yeah, and I, I, let me add one other thing to that. The, it's great that you've got somebody helping you with that, but Google also has tools to to make sure that if you're not working with somebody that's going to specifically help you do that. Google has tools to get your Google business page straightened out, and you can simply Google Google business page to find the instructions for how to get that set up, and they pretty well walk you through that. So if you want to do it yourself, that's also something you can do. And and we should move on, okay. Jim. You're right. Move on to the next person. All right. Thank you, sir. Next up is phone number ending in 0309. You're up next. Hey, how's it going, guys? How are you? Great. How about yourself? Good, good. So here are two success stories that I have for the week. Uh, first one, I've been calling this guy for months. He said he was under contract, and then turns out that the first contract didn't go through. He's on the contract again, but he doesn't think he's going to go through anyways. Uh, from the last time we talked, that's all. That's what's been happening. But now he's going to cancel the deal, and um, I'm going to try to wholesale it to one of my investors. So that was the first one. So I kept following up, even though he told me that. There was a contract, and they were going to close by this day and not to call him anymore, but I still continue to call him. Um, second one I have is I've been um, calling this other guy that he had for property in my neighborhood, and turns out that, you know, I met with him yesterday, and we started talking a little bit more. He didn't know if he wants to rehab it. He has money to rehab it, or he's just better off selling it. So he decided to rehab it after we met yesterday, and turns out that there's more than one property in the estate of the deal. So it turns out there's three properties, which I was not even aware of, which was great. So he's going to list all three properties once he's done with the project that he wants to do. Um, the question that I have for you guys, and this is more for Bruce. Hey, Bruce, I know you're there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yep, yep. Christian, what's up? What message should I leave for historical date, for historical leads? Yeah, when my ISA leaves, set up, sets up an appointment, but they don't answer my calls when I set when uh, for the follow up. What what can I do in the meantime to leave a voicemail for like letting them know, hey, this is Christian calling you for blah blah blah. Like I'm trying to figure out what will be the best you know best solution here. How historical? How More than that? a year. More than a year. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm either uh, gonna gonna leave them a message that says, "Hey, I work with families that um, inherited um, that previously inherited uh, properties that um, still need to be sold, but uh, but but they're just kind of been stuck for a while." So I'm going to kind of specifically reference the inheritance and the fact that they've been stuck for stuck for a little while. The um, okay. another option is just to ignore the inheritance and the, the past probate altogether, and say um, I work with uh, I work with families that have uh, either vacant property or property that that maybe uh, they need to uh, they need to sell. Whether that be uh, maybe a, a previously inherited property, a um, a rental, uh, anything like that, and and now you're kind of plugging in one or two different ideas into their head, but not necessarily saying, I got you because you went through probate. So we can assume that if they're a year old, they probably kind of cleaned the property out. We can assume that. It's not always accurate, but uh, but they probably right. cleaned the property out. They, they most likely it, it's uh, it's been lived in for a little bit. And maybe they're getting to the point where they're about to sell it, or maybe they've been stuck for a while, but uh, they're they're coming out of that emotional quicksand that they might have been in. So I'm just, I'm either going to reference um, that I'm calling because I work with families that inherited real estate that they're thinking about selling, or I'm just not referencing probate at all. I might use it as, as one of two or three examples. Okay. And I'll just give you a little bit of input. I, I've shared before that I <laughs> those are the only leads I work are the one to two year old, sometimes three year old probate leads. I, I if if I don't get a hold of them, I just leave a very direct short message. Hey, I noticed that you either are or recently were the executor of an estate. You may have sold the property. If so, no need to call me back. If you do still have property you want to sell, give me a call. 
just tr- straight to the point. And every time I have a deal, they'll call back with something like, yeah, the whole, you know, my brother and I both got lawyers. We fought it out. And now finally I'm the executor or, yeah, we just couldn't bring ourselves to. There, there's always some compelling reason why they just put it off. But they all tell me that, you know, a year or two ago, I got 50 letters and, you know, 10 phone calls, and you're the only one that's actually contacted me in the last year. So um, I, I, I use the direct approach. I think both can be effective. But the good thing is, um, the reason I like the direct approach is because I don't think anybody else is calling them. So it's not like they're getting bombarded and they're going to avoid returning your call. You know, the the experiences I've had, they were really happy to hear from somebody because they didn't keep all those names and numbers when or letters when people were contacting them a year or two ago. Yep. Yeah. And okay. the emotion is cool. The, the emotion should be completely gone by then. So you, right. can, you can go direct like that. I like it, Jim. Yeah. Kristen, I think you got the win of the week locked in, my friend. Great, good job. Four deals with uh, with two customers. I uh, I think there's. I, I like your odds. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. No, my pleasure. I think it's the best success I had in about a month or two. So you know, can't give up. My ISA is constantly calling, but you know, it's just uh, like anything else. You got to continue to follow up and do your job. Yep. Well done, my friend. Thank you so much. Anything else we can help you with Thanks. this week? Yep. No, I'll be it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, sir. Next up is phone number ending in 2257. You're up next. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's up, Bruce? <laughs> this is uh, Devontae Martin. On? Yeah. Hey, Devontae. Devontae. Uh, hey. So I wanted to uh, ask you a question about uh, speaking with attorneys. So um, my goal is to call at least 300 numbers a day. And I'm getting leads and stuff like that, but the most brutal ones are the ones with people who say they have an attorney. Of course, I hit them with the vacant insurance. I hit them with the fact that uh, the lawyer handles all the legal stuff and I handle every single thing else. I give them all them pictures and stuff like that, but they continue to stick with the lawyer. So um, one lead that I got, uh, the woman just told me, quit calling her, just contact my lawyer. And I called the lawyer one night, and I ended up like, negotiating a deal with him. So my question with you all, how do you start approaching? I want to designate a day to just contact the lawyers. Do you all recommend that or do you uh, should I get permission from the PR first or how would you all work that out or pursue that? Mm-hmm. So I still, I still have a PR first approach. My attorney approach is all about the long-term game. So I'm not going to frequently, personally, okay, and I I know that there are other people that do this differently with success, but personally, if I'm calling an attorney that I don't know and I don't have a good relationship with, I'm not going to say, hey, I'm calling about case number blah, 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 or I'm calling about your client blah, blah, blah. I I am calling them to um, talk about business in general. I'd like I'd like to maybe discuss to see if there's any two-way benefit that we could, um, any way that we could help each other's business. Um, This is a brief synopsis of what I do. Do you have anyone that does that for you now? And then we can sort of leverage that into some of the clients, but I'm not going to lead with the client name. And uh, I'm more than happy for anyone to jump in and kind of offer the other side of the coin here. Because I'm sure there is one. It's just not one that I've used. Um, now, handling people with that say they have an attorney, that's one of my favorite things to handle. <laughs> um, so I want to go back to the people that are telling you that they have an attorney, and you're kind of hitting them with all these reasons why maybe they do need you. Instead of that, I yes. want you to reframe saying, you know, it sounds like it sounds like you've got someone that's really in your corner. Or it sounds like your attorney's probably doing a good job. Okay, so instead of coming at them with, uh, "Oh, well, actually, I do everything that the attorney doesn't do," or "Have you thought about this?" or "What's your attorney doing about that?" You know, you're you're immediately hitting yourself in opposition to what they just said with your approach, and it's probably causing some animosity from them toward you because you're 
you're this person that is now trying to prove to them that they're wrong, and nobody wants to be proven to be wrong. Nobody, even if they are. Okay. So I want you to take the approach of just validating them, hey, and, and, and then reframing what they're saying. It sounds like your attorney's doing a great job for you. Um, do you mind if I tell you a couple of things that I offer that um, that most attorneys don't? So okay, um, okay, you you but you've got to start with a place of rapport once they've given you that objection, though. So start with the rapport. That's your number one goal. Your number two goal is to now offer some solutions that maybe they hadn't thought about or or hadn't considered potentially needing. And then we always want to pivot over to that real estate question eventually. Um, you know, if, if later down the road, are you guys going to be selling real estate or are you thinking about keeping it? So we want to get there. Um, and I think that you're probably hurting some of your relationships a little bit with your approach and most likely not getting to the truth of real estate because they just don't like you when you start correcting uh-huh. them. So they're going to start lying about okay. everything if they- Bruce, I like the way you phrased that there because I'm I'm a big fan of, you know, my attorneys handled everything. I'm a big fan of, so you've already switched your insurance, and I, I like the way you did it. You could soften it a little bit to say, well, uh, that's great, and this isn't normally part of the attorney's job, but I'm just curious, have you switched your insurance? I mean, so you could you could accomplish the same thing, get their attention, make them realize there's something their attorney is not doing without making it his fault or making him seem, uh, you know, derelict for not telling you about it, because it isn't usually part of their job. And there's a lot of other things that, you know, other you, the thing that we've, we've yeah. talked about, about uh, posting no trespassing in the house, it's the same thing. This isn't usually part of the attorney's job, but um, have you made sure that, you know, if the house is vacant, have you put a no trespassing sign? There, there's a lot of, there's a half a dozen things like that. You could do the same process. Yep. All right, Okay. I need to set my game up, Dan. That's you all's favorite. That's my least favorite one. So, okay, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, buddy. All right, bud. Thank you. We have one more in the queue, guys. We probably we probably have time for a few more if you want to hit star six and hit one. Otherwise, for now, the last up in the queue is phone number ending in 9902. Good afternoon, guys. It's Rick Wilson. Hi, hi Bruce. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. How's everything going with you guys? Doing good. good man. Rick, Great, man. You're a frequent flyer. We appreciate you being here. Yes, yes. You know, I, I appreciate you guys doing this. It's been so helpful. Um, uh, just one quick question and not a long one. I, I've, I've been uh, going through the you know protocols and processes I've been recommending, and I'm following them very closely as well as the dialogue. And uh, as, I'm, as I come to understand, um, we need to do 10 calls on – on these uh, leads, uh, you know, I verify that they have real estate, so I'm, I'm not. These are not calls that are not, uh, you know, for people who are not in real estate, don't have real estate. So after the tenth call, uh, pardon me, after the tenth call, I was thinking about putting them on my drip email. I have a program. It's uh, kind of general in nature about real estate, and then uh, following up. Uh, 90 days later after the 10th call, is that something that you're recommending doing or does that make any sense? I know calling a year yeah. later, uh, I can see why from uh, your remarks, Jim. So, but what about that? Uh, what about following up 90 days after the 10th, uh, 10th call? Oh man, Rick, that 11th call, that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's the devil's territory. You never want to call 11 times. I'm just okay. <laughs> do it. No, no, do it. <laughs> call. Yes, of course. Um, call, call. It, it, I don't even, you know, I just randomly pick the number 10. I I, I say randomly, um, but I'll call yeah. anywhere from, you know, eight to eight to 13 times generally over six months, depending mm-hmm. on the person, depending on my bandwidth, depending on my ISA's bandwidth, a lot of different things. Right. And, and then at the end of six or seven months, um, it's probably okay to, to lay off for three months, four months, five months. Yeah. It's probably okay. There, there's always a reason to potentially resurrect that business. If you have time, you could resurrect that, um, that prospecting effort 
for a, a couple of months sprint after a certain mm-hmm. amount of time. And if you want to do it at month nine, um, do it. I, I might, um, instead of just doing one call on month nine, I might do two or three. Okay. And then maybe, maybe instead of just doing one after a year, I might do two or three. Mm-hmm. As long as you have time mm-hmm. and it doesn't affect and negatively affect your prospecting efforts for your newer leads as well. Newer leads. I got you. Yeah. So, yeah, it brings up, I, I used the, um, as you probably know by now, I've spoken about it a number of times, the Frank Patrick four letter system, which lends itself to making, you know, two calls after each letter, which makes sense. And then I was going to send out, uh, a B, uh, a BPL, uh, not a, not a uh, full blown one, just a, a quick um, statistical analysis. They either email that to them or mail it to them directly um, and then follow with the other two calls because I felt at that point that might be, that might resonate with them. Uh, I've actually done something and put something in front of them that might be of value. So uh, what do you think of that idea? I do that. Um this is, uh, I think, I think it's a great idea, and this this would be when. So this would be after six months. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, it would be actually, uh, yeah, it would be after, uh, well, after four months, because the Frank letter, uh, Frank system is one letter a month, and then uh, this would be the fifth month. Actually, that would be sending out the mm-hmm. BPO, and then following yep. that up with the two calls. Mm-hmm. To try and because now I'm not just jawboning this and throwing out the ideas. I've actually done something that might be a value added situation. Right. Um, we, of course, don't know for a fact that that's going to help them or not at that time, but at least it shows you you're doing something uh, mm-hmm. that's beyond just posting a letter. Beyond a, a begging for business, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. I like the idea. <laughs> Maybe too. I'm not yeah. a big fan. Because it's a very, very easy to do, I might add. Uh, most people have these uh, uh, are tuned in. If they're, I know that if they're investors, many of them don't have that opportunity. But with my with my MLS system, I can go in and do a do a statistical uh, BPO, not a not a in depth one, but select some comps, and it'll do a, a statistical analysis, and then I can. Easily mail or email if I have the email. In a lot of cases, I get their email too. Uh, I can either email or send it in, in snail mail. It's uh, it's basically you know three three pages at, in a forty eight cent stamp, and I'm, I'm good to go. So I think that I'm might be worth the trouble. How long they were? So I, three pages is about as long as you want to go. A single page is yeah. even better. Yeah, the same, I, the, I, actually, the analysis. Go ahead. No, I, I think you're fine. Go ahead. The analysis is what. Yeah, no, I was going to say the analysis itself is um, is just that. It's it's one page. It's very mm-hmm. short. Uh, it's uh, maybe six lines on one page. The other three pages are the actual listings, the sales oh, okay. using to Good. create that. So yep. they're color, they're something to look at. They're similar to the house they're selling in many cases, not always, because I sometimes don't have all that information. Uh, I don't know the condition of the house or any of that. Uh, I know the age and the number of rooms and that kind of thing. So I can, I can get it close, but it, that has color photos of the houses that were actually sold. They're similar, loosely using the words similar to theirs. But it gets them to thinking, I think. I don't know. Yeah, you know, um, no, that's that's a great idea, and I I try to incorporate that, especially for those list those um, properties that I'm most interested in buying or listing. So right. I'll send I'll send out on a single page, and sometimes there's some other pages, but at the top of of the page it'll say, "Look, I, I'm not sure if you're thinking about um, selling. If you are." Um, here's an idea uh, based on uh, based on your house being in good condition. So we want to start with with it being in good good condition. If your house is in good condition, then um, it, most likely you're going to get between three hundred twenty five and three hundred forty five thousand dollars based on um, based on the attached comparables. 
If your house is in uh, is in worse condition than this, it needs some work, needs some cleanup. I'm happy to help you do those things, um, but it might affect the uh, it might affect the value of of uh, this value range a little bit. And then put that in a full letter sized envelope and unfold it and send it. And so we'll do that two mm-hmm. or three times a day for um, mm-hmm. for business. It's providing value and it's also putting real live numbers in front of someone. Exactly. All that right. was my thought too. As, as, as we last comment is, I just realized too that yeah, I could put actually put those comps on one page because I don't have to give them the full details. It's not necessary, mm-hmm. and I could probably get it all on one page if I got creative showing the comps and the uh, analysis. So, okay. All right. Thank you. So Thank much you, sir. We appreciate you. We have two more in the queue. I just want to make sure we get to both of them. I'm going to go ahead and close the queue now. Second to last this week is phone number ending in 8512. You're up. Oh, I do. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I just got on a little late. Um, still pretty new at this. Uh, I, I overheard uh, – that you had some good tips. I wanted to see what your list of tips was. I like the uh, switching the insurance and I guess the no trespassing signs. And what, what, what other ones did you have besides that? Those are good hooks. I think conversation hooks. And Jim, go Bruce, ahead. The, you, the, uh, those are actually the top. Those are the, those are the top two that I can think of uh, because it, it's a, you know, it's dealing to their pain point. Um, the worst thing could yeah. possibly happen is the house burns down and they don't, you know, they're not covered. And the second worst yeah. is that a squatter can get in there and have to be evicted, especially with COVID. It could take a long time to, to get people out. Um, I said we had others, but I can't. No, none come. Uh, Tim, Bruce, can you think of any others? I know we've talked about others. I just none others come to mind for me. You could talk about winterizing a property if it's cold or turning utilities off so that there's there is ah. no water leak, something like Perfect. that. Um the the truth is is I like to I like to bury all those later in the conversation. So I don't normally bring those up during the talk, um, when someone's presented some objections. Typically I'll I'll couch every piece of advice that I have and every tip like that behind a, a question like, hey, do you mind if I do you mind if I share a couple of things that uh, that most people are going to want to do? Or do you mind if I make a proposal? And then I'll I'll have everything, all those tips that I've sort of collected through the conversation lined up to where I can present three or four or five different things to them all at once. Uh, it doesn't feel so combative when you just sort of information gather, you gather, you gather, you gather, and then you you ask to make a quick set of recommendations. Right, and, Bruce, uh, I would agree. I would agree. The time you want to use it is when it's very obvious that they're about to hang up. Uh, you know, that's to me, that's a good time to, <laughs> oh, okay, great. I can understand if you switch your insurance, but if you can ask a question like, do you have just a second uh, and let me share a few ideas, if they say yes, yeah, that's a good idea. Bury it. If they say no, say, oh, okay, well, I just want to make sure you switch your insurance. It depends. Every conversation is different. Um, to me, the insurance one is for people that are just, you know, they're just about to hang up and you want to stop them. You know, you, you, you oh, want to okay. change the conversation. But Bruce, would you agree with that, Bruce, or not so much? Um, it's not my style. <laughs> so okay. I agree. The thing is, is I've heard Dad do it effectively. Yeah. And um, and because of that, I'm not going to disagree with it because it can be done effectively. Uh, my my technique is to um, information collect, validate information. Every piece of information that they're going to give me, I'm going to um, reframe it. So they they say, yeah, we got a bunch of family members. Okay, so it sounds like there's a lot of people that have to sign off on any decision. Um, and then they say. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm taking care of the grass cutting myself. Okay, so it sounds to me like you take pride in, in how, how you keep the yard up. You know, I'm, I'm just reframing and validating everything they say. And then at some point in the conversation when I feel there's rapport, so you kind of pull it out when, you're, when it's almost lost. So I'm looking for it at some place that I feel like there's enough rapport. Hey, do you mind if I, um, do you mind if I offer you a couple of uh, couple little little tips that some people find helpful, or do you mind if I make a proposal? And at that point, 
they're typically going to say yes, and normally they're not ready to hang up at, at that stage. I've piqued their curiosity, and now I can say there's usually about three things that, uh, based on your situation, I find that people want to do that normally they haven't done yet. And the first would be uh, making sure that they've um, added a vacant uh, vacant insurance rider to their policy. Have you done that yet? No. If you want an insurance agent that has really good prices, yeah, okay, I'll connect you, or, or no. And then uh, second thing that we find that people often don't do is they haven't posted the property. Last thing you want, the squatter moving in, that it takes you, especially with uh, today's environment, it takes you a year and a half to get them out. Um, so yeah. I put, uh, I put a, a, a no trespassing sign on the property. It just makes it a little easier to get trespassers off your property than it is to evict someone that claims they're a tenant. And then lastly is if the property is vacant, have you already winterized the property? I know it's uh, coming into fall and probably nothing. Yeah. Gonna happen, well, I'm I'm a uh, I'm near the right. Southern California near the ocean, so I don't have to worry about that one. But. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Florida. Uh, we don't have winters here. I was either. thinking, what yeah. have you ever thought about saying you might want to get a ring? You know, because I know they're big around here. Everyone's got one of those ring cameras. Right. Or is that yeah, going like, kind of too yeah, crazy? Yeah. Or no, no. 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 Anything that you can package into that, and I would probably yeah. not lay out two recommendations, but a handful, and then after each recommendation, yeah. ask, ask what, what would happen if somebody did move in, or what would happen if if the house did burn down? You don't want to, do you, do you, have, do you have this yet? Okay, so recommendation, yeah. question, recommendation, question. All right, All right, sir, we have one more, one more in the queue. Does that help? Yep, yep, thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Last up, guys, so we may go a couple minutes over, is phone number ending in 5333. You're up last. Hi. Yeah, my name is Lisa, and I just have a basic question regarding um, what to say as far as the script. The problem I'm having is I do s send out letters, and I don't do the four. I really like those four um, letters that Frank Patrick has, but I'm in Colorado, and the time that I get the leads – uh, those people, ha the leads have already gone through a probate, so it's already right. been three or four months since someone has passed on. So what I did is I picked uh, picked one of the all the leads' letters and sent it out, and then um, I also emailed them basically the same letter. Um, but I'm having a hard time when I call them because most people will say, well, and by the way, many of the homes are already listed, or people will say I've already been taken care of, and so I I just don't feel comfortable with a script. I'm a veteran realtor, so it shouldn't be a problem, but I'm just having a hard time trying to figure out really what to say. Yeah, and your, your situation is unique to Colorado. It's one of the only places where you don't get the information until the probate is, is finished. I, I guess the good right. news, if there is any, the ones that haven't listed or sold should be ready to do something. So it, it should be a quicker closing process once you get them under contract. Uh, Bruce, how would you change the approach given her situation? Um, well, first, first adjustment that I would make, whereas I may call and say, I work with families going through probate, I might call and say, I work with families that have finished probate. Have you guys finished probate? So now immediately you're framing everything that you do as being available for those who are done with probate. Okay, second thing that we offer that we work uh, to help with are the families that made it through probate and they have not sold a property yet or they still have a property that needs to be cleaned out and maintained. Uh, does, that fit, does that apply to you? Okay. okay. And if, if they say no, just recognize every objection that they give you is a positive thing. Every objection or every piece of resistance they give you is an opportunity to build rapport by validating uh, their their objection. You always want to validate it by rephrasing it. So if somebody tells you um, that they uh, that they they want to go with a realtor that that charges the least amount of commission. What do they really mean, Lisa? What do they really mean? Well, they're going to sell their house. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So that's that. That's even deeper than I was taking it. I like it. Okay, what what? So you're in a listing appointment. You know that they're going to sell the house, and they say, 
um, well, it's important to us that that uh, we we pick someone with the lowest commission. What's what's their real objective? I'm not sure. Right. Well, the well most they, money. they want to save money, I guess. Yeah. 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 They want to net the most. Okay. Right. It's not typically not about the savings. It's about what they what they walk away with. So if somebody right. says um, that uh, they have everything handled. Uh, what they really mean is they probably just weren't looking for some stranger to help out right now. So right. I go, okay, it sounds like you probably weren't looking for help right now. Or if they say our attorney's taking care of everything, it, it sounds like you've got a really good team backing you up. Okay, so always rephrase what they say and use those objections as a good thing. Um, and then just kind of pivot. You, you want to say, okay, you know, that, that could change, but later down the road, um, you, you're all going to be holding on to the property, I assume, right? Okay, so we okay. sometimes it's okay to phrase a negative, uh, something that's negative for your business so that that person does not view you as a threat. So if I, if I came to you and I say, I imagine uh, later down the road, you're probably going to be just keeping the property and the family. Um, suddenly you're you're not threatening at all to or I'm not threatening at all to you and and I might have just said something that's completely opposite of what you guys are thinking about doing and human nature is to correct each other. I know that because I train validating objections and almost nobody does it. I, I'll coach people on how to validate an objection and the and then we'll role play. And I'll, I'll give them an objection. I'll say, hey, we have everything handled. And the person that I just trained to validate that objection says, you know, you might think that, Bruce, but let me tell you why you're wrong. So it's human nature to correct <laughs> each other. So give them something to correct. I, I imagine you guys are probably planning on keeping the, the property and the family, aren't you? Well, no, Lisa, we're, we're probably going to sell. Oh, Okay. Well, do you mind if I share a couple of the ways that I might help if you were going to sell? And um, just realize that if they've already listed, they've already sold, they, they're not planning on selling, that's just information for you. It's information you need. It's not necessarily a problem. And Lisa, you brought, brought back memories from uh, quite a few years ago when I used to sell. I used to actually like the, I'm looking to go with the person with the lowest commission and the response I always had was, well, hey, that makes perfect sense. Let me ask you, are you more concerned with the commission you pay or the actual dollars you net? <laughs> of course they're going to say, oh, more with the dollars. I, okay, great. So if I could take five or ten minutes and just show you how I could actually net you more regardless of the commission, would that be okay? It, it, it's, I mean, it's just logic, but they, they, nobody's going to say, no, I just don't like to pay realtors. Or very few people are going to. So, yeah, re rephrasing it will we'll get them every it'll, – it'll get you a lot farther than arguing with them, like Bruce said, for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Does and that help? If you, if you haven't yeah. been to foundation, come to foundation because we're going to – we we spend a whole day talking about how to – how to, and you may have already been, if you did, come again. Um, but uh, we spend a whole day talking about exactly what to say on the phone. We can really sort of craft it and adjust it to your specific needs. But I just gave you the basics. Yeah. All right. You good to go? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, it, it, that was a, that didn't sound like a confident, I guess. So please, um <laughs> Schedule schedule a free uh, schedule a, a call with Bruce uh, supportedallthelead.com dot com or or schedule and I would say both you know both go to foundations and you you'll get a lot of uh, personal time with Bruce on that call just go to our website and sign up for the foundations training it's you know it's free if you're a subscriber it's ridiculously cheap if you're not and it's you'll you'll get countless. Uh, opportunities to practice and get more confident with the, you know, with the scripts and the, we don't even call them scripts, but just with the different approaches and, you know, how to handle every aspect of the conversation, regardless of what comes up. Okay. Right. Okay. Thanks. All right. Well, that was a slightly more confident. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> I want to I want to po close on a positive note. Uh, I want to close like I always do, guys. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. 
Um, I want to particularly thank those that uh, actively participated in the call, and I want to challenge each of you to take one thought, one idea, one technique you heard on this call, go out and put it into practice, and please come back next Thursday and share your results with the group. Thank you so much, everybody. Make it a great week, and we will talk to you same time next Thursday.